All right, so we're going to start with a gummy bear demonstration. We did this once before, okay? And so this is potassium chlorate being heated by a propane torch. All right, so I'm going to take my propane torch and I am going to melt this potassium chlorate. Now, I've got some gummy bears. They're made of sugar. They're going to react here. So the first step is that I'm going to melt this solid. All right. Now, the solid is left here. I know there's some extra here. So this is melting, and it's hard to see the melting here, but we'll do the best we can. Is this an endothermic or exothermic change? Exo. Exo. It is definitely not exo. Is heat being released in this phase change, or is it being absorbed? Absorbed. Aren't I applying heat to this? Yeah. So therefore. The heat is being released by this chemical reaction. Is this chemical reaction exothermic or endothermic? Exo. Yes, by the way, if you're not sure, X, exothermic exiting. Heat is being clearly exiting by this torch here. Okay? And heat is being transferred from the hot torch to this test tube. Okay? So, I need to melt this solid, and it's starting to melt and bubble here. Now this solid is starting to melt. The melting of all solids is endo or exo, to go from a solid to a liquid. Endo. 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 So think about this. This chemical reaction, which is propane reacting with oxygen, is giving off heat. <laughs> the heat given off is being absorbed by this solid here. So I'm taking what we call chemical energy, and I'm converting it into thermal energy and now potential because I'm making a what? A liquid, all right? So I'm basically heating this solid, and is, do you see a liquid on your side or no? Yeah. No. I don't know what you see yet. Not yet. Okay. Honestly, it looks like a test tube. And it's hard to see because it's a little, a little cloudy. It's got the sugar on it. We may see some remnants of the other reaction. But clearly this wasn't melted until I added heat. The absorption of heat is endothermic. Okay, once I have this melted, you guys see melting in your side or no? Nope. How about now? Nope. Well, I see it on my side, but again, it's hard to see. Smoking at the top. There's definitely some smoke coming off the top, so you can definitely see that there's some heat being given off. Okay. Now I need someone to open these up for me. I can do it. Grady, come up here for a second. Grady, you're in this class. <laughs> Open his bag for me, can you? <laughs> can you slide here? Cool. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. And Gray didn't even take a gummy bear. Yeah, I didn't take one. No. Uh, <laughs> personally, are you All right, so I'm going to start this reaction. I'm going to take a gummy bear, which is made of sugar, and I'm going to drop it into what I think is this melted liquid. And I don't know if it's melted or not, but I think it is. All right, see what happens. Wow. Any reason why that didn't go as long as it did last week? Any reason why they didn't go as much? Well, I ran out of the potassium chloride. It kind of reacted, so there's less of it. So I, I ran out of something. It's not happy about it. Still got a little spark in it. Still got some going on. It's not very happy about it. But if you look at this chemical energy to thermal energy to chemical energy, because I made a chemical reaction occur, and now light energy, all right? Now, 
that was exothermic. It was more, it was you know grander last week because I had a lot more of the other reactant. Okay, so it limited the reaction. But I just wanted to go over that. Okay, so back to this reaction here. Okay, you clearly saw there was two reactions. So if I go to my notes, okay, there's two parts to this. Okay, the first part. Okay, the first part here. I should have this on. Is this is propane. This is a propane molecule that was in my propane torch. Okay, so that's propane. And where did my propane torch go? Okay, so here it is. All right, so that's propane plus the oxygen in the air. Notice the flame didn't go into the tank. People think sometimes that the reaction will go into the tank and explode. But the oxygen's on the outside, so the reaction only occurs where there is oxygen. Okay? If there was oxygen in the tank, I'd be in trouble. So would you guys. Okay? In any case, CO2 is made and water is made. Now, notice something. What else do you think is made in that torch? Well, what else was given off? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is already there. What else was given off? Heat. That's right. Yes. Write the heat. Now, you could also write energy. You could also write energy. And as we learned last week, you could also write some number of joules of energy. Energy is measured in joules. So I could have some number, like I could have 2219 kilojoules. Kilojoules means a lot of joules. All right, so, so a number could go there, the word heat or energy. But very important, because I took propane that was in the tank gave it some activation energy and reacted to the O2 out of the tank. It produced CO2 and water vapor, which you don't see, they're colorless, but it clearly gave off heat, right? It gave off heat right there. There's the heat it gave off, okay? Now, this is called a potential energy diagram. We'll do more with these later in the year, but these are gonna help us now. This is not temperature in a heating and cooling curve we measure the kinetic energy changes by the help of a thermometer. Okay, a thermometer doesn't measure potential energy. It measures motion energy. So this is a little bit different, but potential energy is the measure of energy stored in chemical bonds. Would you say that propane, who has a propensity to burn or could explode, okay, if you had enough of it fill up the room, remember the propane bubbles that we did? Okay, remember the bubbles that came down and Chucky uh, almost got me on fire there? Okay? You got underneath the fire. Okay? Okay. Point it this way. Okay, whatever. So propane is very dense. In any case, would you say propane has a lot of energy or do you think the water and the CO2 have a lot of energy? Who's got a lot of stored chemical energy? The, the what? CO2. CO2? CO2 and water is a lot of stored energy. Propane. Which one? I don't know. Which one reacted? Does water and CO2 explode? Sugar. Does water and CO2 explode? No. What can else propane there? burn and explode? Yes. So I if see, propane, propane can burn, can explode, can give off heat, doesn't it mean it's got some uh, stored energy in there? Yes. Yes. That's how you do this. So I'm going to write right here, and I want you to do the same. C3, H8 plus O2. What I'm writing are the reactants. Why are they reactants? Because that's what's starting my chemical reactions. <coughs> now, what do they produce? These would be the products. And if you notice something, when we go to a beach, do we see a cavern? No. That's a nice continental shelf. No, you see water. Water, yes, it can evaporate, but it doesn't explode. It doesn't uh, react and disappear. Water stays around for good reason. It's needed for life, photosynthesis. So these guys are very, very low in energy. And it kind of makes sense. Didn't we give off energy? Yeah. You saw the torch giving off energy, correct? Yeah. Where did it get it from? Because it had a lot of potential in its bonds. The products have a lot less potential. Oh, we're moving down. So what are the products? Whereas on a lower line, well, you've got the CO2, which we know is very stable, and we've got 
heat water. These are my products. And what's so special about them? They're lower in energy. That's very important. Why are they lower in energy? Because energy was given off. We had something with a lot of energy, and during the chemical reaction, we produced something with less. Why is there a lower difference? Because there was energy given off exothermically or endothermically? Exothermically. Right, it should make sense. If I start with a lot of energy in my bonds, and I finish with less energy in my bonds, it must mean that energy was given off. And check it out. There's a way to see this. We call it delta H. Delta H will learn later in the course to be enthalpy. But right now, we'll call it the change of heat from where you start to where you finish. Now, are we going up or down in this process? We're starting with the reactants on the left-hand side. What are we doing here? If I'm starting with the energy of my reactant, something that can burn, and I'm starting and I'm ending up with something with lower energy that can't really do anything, did my energy go up or go down? The change of heat. It went down. You start here, and we went down. Party people, if the levels are dropping, we say the change of heat is negative. Why is it negative? Because we're giving it off. Why is it giving off? Because we're starting with a lot and we're ending with a little bit. Why do we have a little bit of potential energy? Because it was given off. Exothermic reactions give off energy, which means what's remaining has less. This step is going down. Where have we seen this before when steps go down? Where have we seen this before? I know it's hard to see. Does this look familiar? Yeah. The heating and cooling curve, a gas, okay, liquid. We go down this group called the cooling curve. Are cooling curves exothermic? Uh, no. No. Yes. Yeah, no. yes. yes, you're starting high energy. Gases have tremendous energy. They fly around the room. Liquids have to stay in their container. They can't fly a room. So as you go from a gas to a liquid going down, the energy must be released. A gas to a liquid is exothermic. You're going down your cooling curve. It should make sense to you. It's all linked together. Now, so let's go down this list here. This is clearly because the heat is on the product side. You're producing heat. Heat is exiting. This is an example of an exo thermic reaction. Heat is released or absorbed? Released. released. How do I know? Because I can see the reaction that's producing heat. And by the way, the heat is given off to the surroundings. Look at my look. Heat is going this way. Heat is going this way. Heat is given off during this reaction. It's releasing heat. And that's why we go down the energy um, steps. Now, this is important. The value of delta H, is it a positive one or negative one if the energy is being released? Negative. Right, you start high going down, so the difference of your heat is negative always with exothermic. Okay, this is new, but you can handle this. If I have an exothermic reaction, from my propane torch. Do you think it makes the surroundings warm or cold or no warm. change at all? Warm. Yes. If I release heat, the surroundings do what? Absorb it and get warmer. You may say, Mr. Grodsky, then, doesn't this get colder if it loses heat? Uh uh. It's potential energy. Potential energy isn't tied to temperature. Energy is given off by breaking these bonds, these high energy bonds that hydrocarbons have. So my friends, exothermic always have an increase in energy. They always make the temperature go up in here. People get confused. Wait a minute, if the reaction is giving off energy 
The air is absorbing it. I'm confused. As chemistry, as chemists, who do you think the frame of reference always is? The chemicals. The chemicals made it warmer in here. If it gets warm in this room because I turn the heat on, what do they do in this school? They burn diesel fuel. They use um, fossil fuels to heat these rooms. They burn hydrocarbons. Your house gets warm when it gets cold out. You have natural gas, which is a hydrocarbon that's burned, or you possibly have diesel fuel, or what they call fuel oil, that's delivered to your home. I use a fireplace. Fireplace, you're burning, guess what? Hydrocarbons, it's the same thing, exothermically, okay? Now, this is important. Who is more stable? Is stable high energy or low energy? Uh, no low. Right, being stable means you can always know that that thing or process is going to be there. It doesn't have the energy to change. You would say, hopefully your parents are very stable. They're always there for you. People that are unstable, you don't know what they're gonna do because they just hard to predict. Hard to predict things have high energy. You don't know what's gonna happen when they're gonna blow. Okay, stable means low energy. So who has, who is the most stable? Would you say the propane and oxygen or the products, CO2 and water? The products. So you would say products are more stable. They're lower in energy. Lower in energy. Now party people. What is the PE on the side here? Potential energy, yes. So is the product only stable now because it's an exothermic? They're now stable. Originally these reactants, because remember, this is a chemical change. We made something new from something else. That's why it's a chemical change, right? If it was an endo... We'll get there. It'd be the opposite. So then the reactants would be right. stable? Right. Yeah, exactly. So think with me for people. For, we undergo cellular respiration. Although we don't take in propane, we take in sugar, carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. By cellular respiration, we give off energy to make ATP. Your bodies are warm right now because of the burning in cell respiration of glucose. Okay, guess what? <laughs> Coming out of our breath is water and CO2. This is stable, low energy. They're not gonna react, and for good reason. The plant is gonna take the water through its roots, the CO2 in little holes called stomata, and it's gonna make more glucose for us. If this wasn't stable, life wouldn't be existing. Okay, now. Wait a minute, this gave off heat. This heat did what? Oh, it is the heat, excuse me party people, that was used to melt this solid. Now think with me, you gotta know tomorrow. Solid to liquid, is that an endothermic or an exothermic phase change? Right, liquids have more energy than solids. So guess what? The energy released exothermically is the energy being absorbed here. Now notice this potential energy diagram. Okay, I'm gonna write KClO3 here. KClO3, that was the white compound. And notice, I'm gonna write KClO3 liquid. Is this a chemical? or physical change? Physical. physical. Physical, we're not making something new, okay? But then notice the potential energy goes up. Whoa, why the potential energy going up? Because liquids have more motion than solids. Solids only get to be so warm, the melting point. Liquids can be much, much warmer up to their boiling point. So liquids have a higher potential. Okay, notice we're starting low and going high. Hmm, by the way, what am I missing right here? Potassium chloride solid plus something becomes a liquid. What goes in here? Energy. Energy. Right, it's endothermic. So I can write heat. I can write energy. I can write, in this case, a thousand kilojoules. I could put those three things that tell me, because joule means energy. Hey, this is important. 
something plus heat makes the products. If you're adding heat to the reactant side, if the heat is on the reactant side, you need it to make this happen. And look at the potential energy diagram. It's starting low and going high. All right? Who has the least amount? Uh, who is more stable, the products or the reactants? Who is more stable, the reactants or the products? The reactants are stable. They're low energy. To get them to a higher potential, you're going to need energy to climb this ladder. Right? So this is endothermic. So we write it. Endo. And heat is being absorbed or released? Absorbed. Okay? Now, what do you think happens to the temperature in an environment of an endothermic reaction? Decrease. It does decrease. Yes, yes. Temperature decreases. Now why? If heat from the surroundings is going into this process, we're using up the thermal energy in the surroundings there's less of it. In the other reaction that was exothermic, we were releasing heat, we're producing heat. So the environment, the surroundings went up in temperature. But here, we're using it up. And now it's kind of weird, I said, Mr. Grodsky, you took this torch, okay, and you heat it. How can the temperature have gone down? Well, if this solid wasn't absorbing some of the energy to melt, this test tube would have melted. The reason why the test tube glass did not melt is because the energy was being used to melt the solid. It took it away. It, it, it didn't keep it cold, but it definitely lowered the temperature of the environment. Think about a phase change. Think about this. And this is surrounding you. Look at this. H2O solid goes to H2O liquid. Is that endothermic or exothermic? You're going from where now? We're going from a, a scenario where, eh, it's right here. Solid to liquid, right? Solid, liquid, here's my phase change right here. Am I climbing the ladder? Yes, yeah, so it's endo, you need heat. That is an example of an endothermic process. It gets cooler. If I drop ice cubes in my drink, why do we use ice cubes? the solid becomes a liquid. Now the temperature remains the same, doesn't it? Right, the temperature remains the same, but what does the ice cube do? Uh, it takes energy from the surroundings and does what? Uses it to melt. It takes energy from your drink. It makes it colder, temperature drops because energy was needed to be absorbed. Delta H. Think about this. What's the change of heat? I'm starting low and I'm going up because I'm absorbing heat. Think of the heat flow going directly here. So I'm starting low and I'm going up. Delta H is positive or negative? Positive. positive. It's going up. You're absorbing energy. So you're going to finish with something with a greater amount. So it's positive. And who is more stable? We said it already. Who is the lowest in energy? The reactants. And that's the reason why you need energy. You know, I know this isn't the reaction here, but think about this. What do plants do? They take CO2 and water. They take the energy from the sun endothermically and make a high energy molecule called glucose. We take that glucose and we use it for what? energy. The products do what? <coughs> Go to the plants. <coughs> the energy from the sun makes these low energy products become higher energy products. We take that product, glucose, and we use it. That's the formation or the energy flow of life that all comes from the sun. Okay? All right. So that's some basics there. Now let's go over some other things I haven't touched on. Let's talk about this reaction. Overall, it's exothermic because the heat's on the product side. You can think of releasing heat, okay, the products are more stable. Good. Now, in a reaction, we're doing two things. 
we got to break these bonds and reform new ones. Bonding is something that's low energy. Atoms come together to bond to get to a low energy position. Yes? I have a question. Yes? So like for the temperature, for the first one, it's losing heat, and it heats energy, right? Yes. So how is, how is it increasing in heat when it's losing? Uh -huh. it's losing We're heat. saying the surroundings. Oh. First, we're not saying that the propane it loses heat and gets colder. The propane breaks bonds and reforms new ones in a chemical reaction with oxygen. The difference of energy in what we produce is lower, so the difference goes to the environment. This is a chemical change. If I've got a block that's 100 degrees and I drop it in water that's 60, it's going to lose heat and get colder, and the warmer is going to gain and get warmer. That's a physical change. Okay? So here's the deal. To break these lower energy compounds, energy has to go in. To reform new bonds, energy has to be released. Because it's exothermic, more energy must be released. Now watch what I do here. This is really important. Okay, watch what I do here. I'm going to erase some things. Watch this. Just so you can see it. I'm get rid of some good of some stuff here. Okay, you don't have to do this. Watch. Okay. Now, I gotta get rid of some things here. Let's go to the top of this line, the highest energy position. So I've got my reactants here. This energy is needed to break bonds. Why is my arrow going up? I have to add energy to break these bonds. Hey, C3H8 has to break down in order to react. Now, once it's here, it's a free atom. But now it has to go where? All the way down. I've got to break bonds. I rearrange them. It goes down. Always, always the first part is breaking bonds. Who's a bigger arrow? Who's a bigger arrow? Uh, right. There is more energy released in forming new bonds than energy absorbed to break. Does that make sense why the total change is this arrow down? Yes, and that's why it's negative. Check this out. In an endothermic process, which arrow is bigger? The reactant arrow? I've got to break, well in this case, I've got to heat them up to a certain part and come down. So in this case, there's more energy needed to be absorbed than released. So that's why it's endothermic. Okay, now let's do another demo. Okay, now if you like that one, I know today's it was a little kind of it wasn't as dramatic, but in any case, let's do a cool demo. Okay, so this is the cool demo right here. He's getting religious on me. I heard God. Okay. We're gonna look at the floor. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, this is a very cool demo. Now I'm gonna take two solids and I'm gonna mix them together. I don't know if you can handle this one, I just got my uh, stirring rod. Alright, so let's see what now, what the hell is that spider I want to uh, make sure I have this cleaned off here, so I'm just going to add some water here. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm going to take this, one of these white compounds, and I'm going to put that here. And you can't see, you can't see Jack because Jack's not in this class. Okay. Sorry. Who's Jack? Okay. Now. I'm gonna mix these two solids. <laughs> this is gonna be crazy, guys. It's a very cool demo. It's a very cool demo. All right, let's go. So I'm gonna stir. All right. Okay, there's me stirring. Okay, let's make some observations. They're melting. 
It'll be all right. Water world. So what's it's happening? Clump it's clumpy. It's melting. It's clumpy. Something's changing, right? Yeah. It looks like slush. Yes, it's becoming slush. Wait, what did you just mix together? The chemicals return to the very cool demonstration. Strontium hydroxide and ammonium thiosulfate, thiocyanide. Now, why don't you glad you asked? Okay, something you don't use every day. I thought you were going to say like salt and sugar or something. No. <laughs> Okay, so this is the very cool demo. Excuse me, guys, you're missing the very cool demo. That would be unfortunate. Yes, so what I just did is I mixed two white compounds. Okay, yep. As you can see, and this happened. Pretty amazing. Would you call this a chemical change or a physical change? Physical. It looks physical, but there's actually, if you waft this, there's a new gas being made. I know you can't smell it yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. What if you look at the chemical reaction given to you? Oh, yeah. I can see that smell. Construct propane. Okay. So, just make napalm. This is one of my favorite demos. It doesn't have to have flames in what? Yes, it does. It does? Yeah. This, I, sometimes I call this the uplifting demo. It makes you appreciate all the flames here, but there's definitely a chemical reaction. Something definitely occurred, okay? A new substance. And this is such an uplifting demo that I want to show to you that it's understandable to you. So if we take a closer look, okay? Well, again, I can't say how cool this is, all right? I can't say how cool this is, but I'll do my <coughs> best to show you that energy was transferred in this process. The question is, where was it transferred to and from? Did you see any flames? No. no, you can't measure the temperature of the room, so you don't know. But it is uplifting. It's an uplifting demo and a very cool one. So what we need to do is take a closer look. A closer look at this to really appreciate this demonstration. You guys look bored. This is such a cool demo. I I'm mixed waiting. two white powders together. What is not so unbelievable about this? And now I've got like a slushy water. Why are you like so like, Drink so it. what? Drink it. And it'll be I can't tell you how uplifting this demo is. Something's gonna happen. Yeah. No? <laughs> no I, what are we talking about? Something's gonna happen. Because you keep saying cool and uplifting. It is such a cool <laughs> demo. It's so cool that it is uplifting. Light okay? On you just gotta, you gotta wait for it. Yeah. Oh, we have it's to wait. just starting. Oh, no. I don't like it. Oh. Now, if I'm leaving, that's usually an issue of printing. Hold on! It's crazy. I'm scared. This is such a crazy thing. Drink it. Okay. We're going to see here. We need to look at this closely. Hold on. I'm telling you, it's uplifting. That's uplifting! What? Uh, it all leaked out. That's just the water, though. It's not full of water. <laughs> well, I froze the board to the top for a while. What? It was such an endothermic reaction, it did what? It grabbed energy from the water underneath that it froze it to the board. Take a break. Great. Hey, great. Hey, great.